Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this year's Congress. Thank you for bringing your people from across the globe. Thank you, O oh God, for all who are joining online to receive the word. Let your word come to everyone with grace, with power, with life, and with glory. And let nobody ever remain the same again. Thank you, Father. As I begin to speak, anoint my lips of clay. Let it be all of you and none of me. And let your word be backed with your divine power. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I give glory to God for the opportunity to be with us at the Congress this year and for the privilege to speak. I want to thank Daddy Gio and Mommy Gio for this invitation and I want to thank them in particular for the great support that they have given me since I assumed office as the national president or the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. Daddy and Mommy, I'm very, very grateful. Thank you for access. You give me access anytime, any day. Thank you for allowing me to drink into your fountain of wisdom. Uh, it has made the work very, very easy for me. And thank you for all the support in every way. I want to thank you so, so, so very much. And the Lord will continue to keep you alive and strong and vibrant to be a blessing not only to the PFN, not only to the church in Nigeria, but the ch to the church globally. Thank you, Daddy. And I want to celebrate all the leadership of the Redeemed Christian Church of God for providing support, encouragement, and strength to our Father in the Lord. More grace to you in Jesus' name. The theme of this year's Congress is the siege is over. Wow. The siege is over. No theme could have been more appropriate. Daddy is actually acting to type as the prophet to this nation and prophet to nations of the world in bringing up this very, very appropriate theme at this particular time. And I want to take my text from this book of Second Kings, chapter 6, and we're going to read from verse 24. And it came to pass, after this, that ben that king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. At this particular point in history, Samaria was the capital of Israel. And ben was the arch enemy of Israel at this particular time. So he gathered all his hosts and then he besieged Samaria, blocked every entrance. The enemy surrounded the city. Nobody could go in, nobody could go out. No goods could go in, no good could go out. No food could go in, no food could go out. And the natural consequence of a siege is famine. And that's what actually happened. There was a great famine, that's verse 25, and there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of doves, doves dung for five pieces of silver. So there was a famine, terrible famine. Now, we're familiar with the story. Famine so severe that children were being killed by their mothers and boiled and eaten. It was that terrible. Now, something that will make a mother kill her own child must be horrible, beyond description. A mother would do anything to save the life of a child. But in this case, because of the siege, 
and the action of the enemy against the people of God. They were killing their children and eating their children. It was very, very, very bad. There was no solution anywhere. The military couldn't provide an answer. The political elites couldn't provide an answer. The economic expert couldn't provide an answer. The king that sat on the throne was very helpless. Now, a woman cried to the, to the king, help, oh, oh my lord the king, help. And the king said, how am I going to help you? I too, I need help. So in the whole nation, there was no help anywhere at all. And day by day by day, the siege was getting more terrible, more critical, and the famine was getting more biting. That's what the enemy likes to do. The enemy likes to put individuals' life under siege, likes to put people's health under a siege, likes to put families under a siege, cities under a siege. And do you see what is happening in Nigeria, in the northeast, in the northwest, in the north central, and various parts of Nigeria, south? East and everywhere. You see the enemy at work laying a terrible siege against our people, against our cities, against our nation. That is the work of the enemy. An enemy has done this. It happened before. But I want to assure you something. The God who acted at that time and ended the siege that the enemy laid against the people of God is alive is on the throne he controls the affairs of the world and as we gather here and we pray and we seek his face he will bring an end to every siege in your life in your family in your business Every siege against our cities, every siege against the nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody shout a big amen? Now, there was no solution anywhere, no answer. Not from the military, not from the civil authorities, not from the political elites, not from the academia not from the economic experts. There was no solution anywhere. But fast forward. Go to chapter 7 of the Second Kings. And let me read from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now, what happened here? Where there was no solution from any quarter, no end in sight, help came from heaven, help came from above. The Spirit of the Lord came upon the man of God, Elisha. Just like I believe the Spirit of the Lord has inspired our daddy to bring this theme at this particular time. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Elisha and the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, this time tomorrow, the siege shall be no more. The summary of what Elisha said was that the siege is over. And he didn't say it out of his mind. No. He said it by the Holy Spirit. He didn't say it because he read it from a book. No. He said because God put the word in his mouth. And when God sends his word, his word cannot fall to the ground. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10, the Bible says, 
For the rain that comes down from heaven and waters the earth and makes it to bring forth and to birth, so shall my word be that proceed out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. The word of the Lord cannot fail. The word of the Lord came to Elisha and he declared it boldly. The siege is over. And hear me, men and brethren, ladies and gentlemen, young, old, male and female, it does not really matter for how long the enemy has laid a siege against you or against your family or against your business or against your health. The word of the Lord is coming forth. The siege is over. Hear me, men and brethren, it doesn't matter for how long the enemy had laid the siege against our nation, Nigeria. The word of the Lord is very, very clear. The siege is over. It doesn't really matter for how long the enemy has laid a siege against your finances. Hear the word of the Lord. The siege is over. I'd like you to declare it after me. Declare, say, in the name of Jesus, the siege is over. Repeat again, say, in the name of Jesus, my siege is over. Can you say a loud amen to that? And from this camp tonight, the word of the Lord is going to the four corners of Nigeria. The word of the Lord is going to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, to the central part of Nigeria, to every state of the federation, every geopolitical zone. We know the enemy had laid terrible siege and it was getting worse and worse and worse. But the word of the Lord has come to us through our prophet. The siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. Can you point at three people and prophesy? Say, the siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. If you believe it, lift your hand and shout, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you see, the man of God spoke by the Spirit of the Lord. He spoke by the authority of the Lord that famine was over because the siege was over. Drought was over because the siege was over. But now listen, one man, a chief economic expert, counselor to the king at that time, verse 2 of chapter 7, then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be? That's the devil speaking. Might this thing be the tactics of the devil right on the Garden of Eden is to make people to doubt the word of God. Has God said? And will he do it? Oh, this looks too incredible. This is not possible. That's the voice of the devil. But see, individuals, you have to decide whose voice do you want to believe? The voice of faith or the voice of fear? Whose voice do you want to believe? The voice of God or the voice of the devil? The devil is saying, oh, it's not possible. You have been sick for too long. Oh, you will die of that sickness. You should say, no, I believe the word of the Lord. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of God. What the devil is saying to you, oh, yes, you have so much depth, and the depths are piling up and piling up. There is no hope for you. You should reply the devil, I believe the word of the Lord. My debt is cancelled. The siege is over. Or the enemy may be saying about your business. That business will die. That business will go down and it will not rise again. Don't believe his lies. 
believe the word of the Lord, declare at the face of the devil, to the face of the devil, the siege is over. Can somebody please declare, say, my siege is over. Say it again, my siege is over. Say it again, my siege is over. Let somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Now, this man, he didn't believe the word of the Lord at all. So Elisha said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. You will see the plenty that God is bringing. You will see the end to the siege, but you will not partake of it. Not me. I believe the word of the Lord that Nigeria's siege is over. I will see the end of the siege and I will partake of the fruit, the blessing that God has promised. And I decree upon your life too, you will see the end of the siege. Every siege that the enemy has brought into your life and you will eat the fruit of the blessing of the Lord. Somebody say amen. All right? Now, listen to this. Verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entry in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Now, four leprous men. Four leprous men. People that society had rejected. People that were not qualified to be living in the city. They were living at the outskirts of town because they must not be found mingling with anybody. People that have been considered hopeless, outcasts. They were the people that God chose to use to bring an end to the siege. Don't despise yourself. No. Yes, it's good to be educated. But that is not what God wants primarily from you. It's good to have a good pedigree, of your background, where you're coming from, and all of that. Good. But God just wants people who will dare to believe him, no matter their social standing or social status. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31, he says, See your calling, brethren. See your calling, brethren. Not many wise, not many mighty, not many noble. God has chosen to use the weak things of this world to confound the things that are mighty. The foolish things of this world to confound the things that are wise. The things that are not to confound the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his sight. God wants to do what he wants to do independent of the opinion of the expert, independent of the capability of the military or otherwise, independent of the behavior of the political elite or otherwise. He just wants people like you and I to simply believe his word. So these four lepers, they believe the word of the Lord and then they decided, verse 4, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. They decided to move because God had spoken. I believe the Holy Spirit steered them all to connect with the voice of the Lord through prophet Elisha. So they moved at the word of the Lord. They did not doubt like that um, economic expert doubted. They moved. And God was waiting for them to move because indeed it was God that was going to fight the battle. He only needed some people to believe him and to act on his word. 
So these four lepers chose to be the people who will believe God and act on his word. So as they moved, the host of heaven moved. Each step that they took, the host of heaven moved mightily to fight for Israel, to scare off the enemy that had come to lay siege. And you know what? The Lord of hosts is our refuge. The Lord of hosts is fighting our battle. The battle is the Lord and he's the one that is bringing an end to the siege. All we need to do is to believe his word and move upon his word. So let's believe his word. Let's act on his word. And we will see siege crumbling, enemy disappearing, and abundance released and victory coming to the people of God. So get ready for victory because the Lord is fighting for you. So they moved and the host of heaven moved with a great noise. In their millions, the host of heaven moved to defend the people of God. Then the Syrians, they had the noise of chariots, chariots of fire from heaven, and they ran for their lives. And they left their tent with all the goods, with their clothes thrown along the way. They ran in terror. Now let's see what happened according to the scripture. Let's, let me read here from verse 8. And when these lepers came to the utmost part of the camp, they went to one tent. Oh, oh now excuse me. Let's, let's go back. Verse 5. And they rose up in the tree light, that's the lepers, to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the utmost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man. Why? For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their ashes, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. They ran in terror. The army of heaven moved. And as we are here tonight, as we believe the word of the Lord together, the army of heaven is moving into every part of this nation to chase the army of the devil out and to bring an end to every siege. The army of heaven is moving into your life, into your family, into your business, into your finances, into your churches, into your ministry, bringing an end to the siege of the enemy. The siege is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. I want you to declare it with a roar, with a shout. Declare, say, the siege is over. Say again, say, the siege is over. Now personalize it. Say, every siege in my life, in my family, is over. Let heaven hear your loud amen. Amen. And not only in your life, but in this nation. Now let's prophesy to our nation, Nigeria. Please declare, say Nigeria, hear the word of the Lord. The siege is over. Repeat again. Say Nigeria, hear the word of the Lord. The siege is over. Can I hear your loud amen? Now, I believe that when we leave this campground tonight and we go back to our residences, you will hear the shout of victory, the shout of breakthroughs, the shout of turnaround, and you know that indeed 
God has fought for you and the siege is over. Now let's go forward. Let me now read. Okay, let's read verse 16. And the people went out and spoiled the tent of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel according to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. Abundance came because the siege was over. Plenty came because the siege was over. And how did the siege come to be over? By the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to bear the charge of the gate, to be to have the charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. As the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And the Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eye, but shalt not eat thereof. And it so fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. He saw the siege over. He saw the abundance came. But he didn't live to eat of it. But for you, not only is the siege over, you will see the abundance that God is bringing and you will be partakers of it. Let's believe the word of God. Do not behave like this man who didn't believe the word of the Lord. It was too good to be true. Ah, in 24 hours, how can it be? A seed that had been there for several months, yes, a seed has been there for several years. Yes. We're talking of God Almighty, with whom nothing is impossible. A sickness that has been there for years. One word is enough, and it's gone. I, I command that siege of sickness in your body to be over now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, depth that has been there for so long. How can it just disappear like that? Yes, he is God Almighty. That siege of debt is over. A marital crisis has been there and homes that have been separated for so long. How can you say the siege is over? Yes. God Almighty is speaking. The siege against your marriage is over. Oh, the trouble of Nigeria has been there. Oh, Boko Haram, bandits, kidnappers, all this and that. How can you say the siege is over like that? Yes. The governor of the whole universe, the governor among the nations, the king of kings, the one who sits upon the throne, is saying the siege is over. And if you believe it, it's going to happen to you. I want you to stand on your feet wherever you are and lift your hand and begin to give glory to God for his word. The siege is over. My siege is over. Every siege of my life is over. The siege of my family is over. The siege against my business is over. The siege against my health is over. The siege against my finances is over. The siege against my ministry is over. The siege against Nigeria is over. Give him thanks. Give him praises. Give him worship. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We honor and adore you. Thank you because you spoke and it came to pass. And you are spoken again through our Father in the Lord that the nations should hear, that individuals should hear, that nations of the world should hear that the siege is over. For as many as believe your word, O oh God, let there be a confirmation of the word in their lives. Let every siege of sickness be over. Let every siege of debt be over. Let every siege of affliction be over. Let every siege of bondage be over. Let every siege of family crisis be over. Whatever siege, in their lives. Let it be over. And Lord, let the siege 
against a nation be over. Let siege against nations of the world be over. And let there be peace and a mighty breakthrough. You did it before. Do it again. We receive from you now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen.